We are now entering the Hall of Vertebrate Origins. Let's get a little tour of the place before I give you an in-depth look at all the specimens. Let me first say that I'm not an expert, or no, actually I'm not even knowledgeable in these things. I only know the bare basics. So many of the specimens I either don't know or know very little about them. So please, if you know what they are or notice I made a mistake, please leave a comment. The same goes for prehistoric mammals. But here's the strange part. I can actually name more specimens in the Hall of Mammals than I can in the Hall of Vertebrate Origins, but I don't know how to put the mammals in the correct evolutionary order. And yet I can put the Hall of Vertebrate Origins in the correct order. Well, for the most part anyway, it's not 100% correct. Those are... Uh, I'm pretty sure those are not trilobites. They look like invertebrates of some kind. Okay, they are invertebrates. They may be ostracoderms or shellskin fishes. Okay, I know this one. That's a Dunkleostis. It's a heavily armored Devonian fish. I'm pretty sure we actually don't have fossils of the rest of the body, because the front is heavily armored so it's easy to fossilize. This is the coelacanth. I'd like to see a live one instead, but... The ones alive today are actually evolved versions of the old coelacanth. I mean, it's really hard to imagine a species going through 70 million years without evolving. The ocean it lives in right now is definitely not the same as the one from 70 million years ago. It had to evolve to survive. So, saying it's actually a living fossil is not entirely true. Although, I think cockroaches are relatively the same as they were 300 million years ago. That's how well adapted they are. Unfortunately, I know almost nothing about prehistoric fishes, so I'm going to let the soundtrack do the talking for me. Okay, this is like the fish version of the dueling dinosaurs. It's a fish eating another fish. Whatever killed it must have happened suddenly because it was still eating.
You gotta love signs in museums that encourages you to touch things. The fossil feels surprisingly smooth. They probably polished it up. Some prehistoric sharks. The only prehistoric shark I can name is Kakarodon Megalodon. We'll see it in a minute. Yeah, I can't make out what that's supposed to be either. Sorry. I do know some prehistoric sharks have some pretty wacky looking teeth. Take a look. And here's a roll of much bigger looking teeth. That big one is Kakarodon Megalodon. There's another one you can touch too. I heard the edges are still sharp, but I can't really reach it from here. Yeah, they probably don't want you to cut your fingers. And yes, I know the Megalodon is very close to modern day. And that's a full-sized jaw, just to give you a clue on how big it really is. Actually, you probably can't tell because it's so high up. I really love this display. And no, I have no idea what this animal is. I know it's an amphibian. The rings around the eyes are all natural. But when you look at it, it almost looks like somebody drew on it with a pen. That almost looks like a real fish tank with a live animal in there. Over here is a little display of the evolution of the fin to feet. I think these are prehistoric lobed fin fishes. There's a reason for my suspicion too. The earliest tetrapods, or four-legged animals, evolved from lobed fin fishes. Usually these displays are done to show the evolution of certain creatures. But, like I said, this is just a suspicion. I could be wrong. These skulls in the same glass case are probably amphibian skulls. That's the skeleton of a really big fish. And I think that's the exact same thing, but with the real fossils. It's really big. It's about 8 to 10 feet long. This is a tenospondyli from the Triassic, or primitive amphibian. It's called Botnaria, and it's very common and found all over the world. No idea what these are. They almost look like bits of an armored amphibian. It kind of reminds me of an Ankylosaurus. Here are a bunch of amphibians belonging to the class of Bactromorpha, or frog form in English. Either that, or these guys are the ancestors of frogs and salamanders. There were frog fossils at the corner too. These guys you see here are also pretty darn big. I don't think those are nostrils. I think those holes are a result of those teeth puncturing two holes through its skull. No idea what those two skulls are either. I think that's a Diplocalus, or maybe it's a Diplocerapus. I don't know. We'll see more of Boomerang Head later. This slab of rock seems to be filled with skulls from the same kind of amphibian. They probably belong to the same creature that you're about to see. I think this series of skulls shows the different growth stages of this creature. Maybe it's a Scalrocephalus, because I heard they are very common. Here we go, here's a growth series of Diplocalus skulls. The last skull, it might actually be a Diplocerapus though. I don't know, I'm just comparing the shape of the skull with the pictures I've seen. Anthracosauria. These are early amphibians that are kind of reptile-like.
Here's a variety of lizard skeletons. This animal I know for a fact is not a moss chops, and I'm also pretty sure it's not a synapsid. Looks like a herbivore judging from the teeth. See, moss chops is over here. This is a therapsid, or the group of animals that would evolve into mammals. I have no idea what the headless one is. His skull is pretty thick, but nowhere near as thick as Pachycephalosaurus. Scutosaurus, the giant reptilian relative of the turtle. This animal is supposed to have bony armor covering its body, but I don't see it. It's nowhere to be found, so I really have no idea what the armor looks like. Hey look, it's the skull of a Spinosaurus! Okay, it's not really a Spinosaurus. It's either a Crocodilomorph or something closely related to crocodiles. Looks like a Gario. It's probably a close relative. The teeth looks nasty, but that mouth really isn't going to be doing too much damage on big animals. That is a Prestosuchus. Not to be confused with Postosuchus in Walking with Dinosaurs. They're like distant cousins of Crocodilomorphs. The erect posture of the legs probably means these things are fast runners. This is big, but Postosuchus is even bigger. I have no idea why there's a snake here within the Crocodilomorphs. Because the snakes have their own sections as you will see later. Hmm, there are Crocodilomorphs, turtles, and fishes mixed up here as well. I can't even figure out what this display is about. We're still definitely within the Crocodilomorph section though. Looking at the bleach white bones, those might not be fossils, those might actually be modern gators put on display. Okay, here are some real prehistoric turtles. This really cool looking turtle is probably the second oldest species of turtle that we know of. The name is pronounced something like Proganochelus. Oh great, I can see my reflection in the glass better than I can see the ichthyosaur fossils. I'm going to see if I can fix it in the video editor. If not, then you get to see video footage of what I look like when I'm walking. Ichthyosaurs are pretty cool marine reptiles too. They're built like dolphins, which means they're good swimmers and probably really fast. I'm pretty sure that's a Cryptoclatus and not an Elasmosaurus. That's not a turtle. Whether it's actually related to a turtle or not, I don't know. But I do know it's from the order of Placodontia. And over here is Placodon itself. It's a chubby marine reptile that kind of looks like a manatee. That would be the Elasmosaurus. This animal has a long neck just like that of a sauropod. And also like a sauropod's neck, it's not very flexible. So it wouldn't be able to hold its neck up out of the water like a swan. This is also the reason I don't believe the Loch Ness Monster is a plesiosaur of some sort. As for whether I believe in the Loch Ness Monster or not, well, that's another matter. You can see my opinions on this on my site. I should have something on it soon. This is Tyler.
Tylosaurus. The big ones can get up to 50 feet long. And believe it or not, these things are closely related to modern monitor lizards and snakes. By the way, we've entered the late Cretaceous. Here are some prehistoric snakes and monitor lizards. The evolution of snakes is kind of foggy, but I think they may have came from the ocean just like monitor lizards. Tapuzuara and Pteranodon. Don't worry, I'll give you close-up shots of these two in a minute. Plus, we have more Pteranodon specimens here. The skull and wings of a Pteranodon. No idea what that one is. I'm pretty sure the two small ones are Pterodactylus. And of course we have Rampharynchus. You can see that unmistakable diamond-shaped thing at the tip of the tail. Now for some close-up shots of the Tapu Zuara. And that about wraps up for the Hall of Vertebrate Origins. Tune in soon for the Hall of Primitive Mammals.